the levels of crime detection have to be addressed. In recent times, the regional rate overs at around 10%. According to the U.S. Census Bureau, the average population of New York City, as it in July 2013, was just over 8.5 million. Yet the detection rate for serious offenses, such as murder, was between 80 to 90 percent. So we, in our region, have serious work to do. Technology must become the handmaiden of the police in addressing spiraling crime. Wireless surveillance, GPS systems, PDA devices, in-car computers must enhance and eventually replace police reports, station areas, and eyewitness testimony. Such advances will also assist not just in crime detection, but also in crime prevention, thereby ushering in the new technology of policing. But any investments in technology must be coupled with adequate training to ensure strategically optimal uses of technology for reducing crime and serving citizens. One of the greatest travesties of the current criminal justice is to be found in the management of pretrial detention. The extraordinary length of pretrial detention must be regarded as a human rights issue and should be targeted as a pressing priority. Courts in our region have often heard cases after the accused has already been in prison for a period longer than the sentence would have been if he had been tried and convicted immediately. Of course, the obvious, even difficult solution is to ensure that trials take place soon after arrest and charging. But the issue of pretrial detention involves balancing of, of interests. For example, failing to detain a suspected offender may jeopardize the chances of a successful prosecution, particularly with the problems of witness intimidation in the region. However, detaining persons in remand under conditions which are uh, unacceptable is also an affront to the concept of justice and the rule of law. But there is no database to get a match, then we are spilling up in mud. So let us stop going on the human rights issue in isolation and in a vacuum from what is taking place in the society, or else there may be no humans left to have rights to enjoy. <laughs> In closing, because I'm a, a web tank, in closing, the government is committed to ensuring that the judicial arm of the state is strengthened and um, remains a fundamental, a firm pillar in the constitution to that end. Before I begin, I would just like to thank the organizers of this symposium for being so kind so as to extend an invitation to my office so as to allow us to be part of this process. I would also like to publicly thank the relatives of the Nacital SC for raising, supporting, and being there for a person who would have stood, who would have stood steadfastly with the Office of the Director of Public Prosecutions and indeed with many other stakeholders in the criminal justice system. Ladies and gentlemen, of course, this morning, we would have had the privilege of listening to many very interesting comments and suggestions from my colleagues. Justice finding judges to deal with that level of trials that will now be required. Well, he told me it's assuming that we will have a trial, and that's true. But that is also tied into what the learning director said about plea bargaining. What is there to persuade persons to enter into a plea when they know they can hire a defense attorney, they can frustrate the process, they could confuse a jury, and most likely be acquitted? You tell me you're abolishing juries. I'm happy about that too, but I'm coming to that. 
when, the, when I think it's the Honorable Attorney General, someone said before that there are 500 pending criminal murder, 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 murder. indictments. Now, when we eliminate the preliminary inquiries, we now may push that up to about 800, 900, 1,000. I am yet to understand why the average trial, criminal trial in Trinidad and Tobago is now lasting months. There is one that is going on now, I don't want to be, I, and this does not resemble any present uh, ongoing matter, <laughs> crossed, which has crossed a year, and I don't want to, um, to cause the judge any, um, any stress, but it seems like it will be going for another year. Now, how could you have a trial, and it seems like it's going to rival the Morris Bishop trial, how can you have a trial running for over a year where you have a jury? Just this week I was thinking, but these people may have a business, they may have a small business. What's happening to the business while they are away every day sitting on a jury for a year? Or they may be a single employee in some small enterprise. Is the employer required to hire a replacement because under law he has to continue to pay that employee? So the, the elimination of the preliminary inquiry is not the answer, it will just push it up to the high court. And Corresponding with that move is the introduction of plea bargaining, which I'm happy the Attorney General has been able to, um, to, to get going. But I also think that, and this could be controversial from the position of the bar, from the private bar, I think we need to eliminate jury trials. Because you are having a jury sitting there for months listening to evidence, and the trial judge is burdened with trying to summarize that evidence, but you're telling them com complex concepts that law students will take years sometimes to understand, and some of my colleagues still don't understand it. When <laughs> but you're asking jurors to understand complex co concepts of law and apply to, to the evidence. And then you have complex frauds. I remember advising during the course of an investigation in a, in, a, in a fraud matter, very complex fraud. And I remember someone said to me, and he has a PhD in finance and about two or three MBAs. He said to me, um, Gilbert, will this thing, thing ever get a trial? I said, well, I hope so. And I am really hoping so. But he said, but I am a man in finance and I have to read this thing over three and four times to understand what happened. So right away that brought home to me, the need for special juries. And I see the amendment the Attorney General has introduced cater for special juries. But I, I think it would be advancing the system if we were able to eliminate juries. But as I was saying, the answer to the um, problem is not eliminating preliminary inquiries. But I think if we eliminate them, it's a first step. But we must have robust case management rules and case management um, conferences. And the trial judges will have to be firm in order to have defense attorneys in particular disclose their defense. So AG, I think you have to um, also introduce disclosure rules that will cause mutual disclosure 